Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. And yes, it is a video about growing java moss. Probably one of the easiest plants there is to grow, and also quite hardy. Though it's not quite in the range of, let's say, duckweed, my nemesis, a plant that I can never seem to kill. But it is extremely uh, easy to grow, and it likes a really wide range of parameters. Anything from uh, soft acid water, which is probably its preference, uh, to hard alkali water. I've kept it with uh, African cichlids and uh, guppies and platies and mollies and all sorts of fish that like it slightly on the alkali side and it does quite well in there. And speaking of mollies, uh, the other thing that's good about this particular plant is it's not very tasty. Uh, so even herbivores like uh, mollies don't tend to do much damage to it. They'll nibble on it a little bit, but they prefer a lot of other plants. Uh, one of the exceptions probably is goldfish. Uh, that seem to be able to take anything, but even they will chew on another plant in preference to this. Uh, and therefore, you know, it tends to grow quite well. Now, as far as light goes, it will take anything from low light to moderately high light, like this tank here. Uh, this is the bottom of the tank, so it's not as bright here. But near the top, which you'll see in a, a little bit, uh, there's two... 10k greater than CRI 95% uh, uh, LED tapes that go across this and it does shed quite a bit of light and you're going to see how and well it grows in that sort of environment. So those are pretty much uh, the easy bits. Now to get it to grow well and that's the probably the most important part about this video is uh, there are a couple things that I find that Java Moss needs for it to do extremely well. It doesn't need fertilizers. It doesn't need anything along those lines at all. Uh, whatever the fish put out is perfectly fine. But I find if the ball, like this uh, moss ball here, gets large enough, what happens is at the bottom, which is the section we're looking at here now, uh, it doesn't get as much light. And more importantly, what it does is it traps a lot of mold because there's not a lot in the way of flow through it. One of the things I do from time to time, uh, if my tank doesn't have a lot of mechanical filtration, is I'll lift up the ball and just vacuum underneath it a little bit, and that way you can, you know, can reduce your the amount of mulm uh, without having to do too much else. So that is one of the things that you need to do, which is prune it, which is very, very easy. You just take the ball, rip uh, it in half, and separate it into two tanks, and that's as easy as that gets. I'm going to show you a clip here just coming up now of java moss that I don't do that with because what I was doing is I was trying to encourage a lot of algae to grow in the moss because I was uh, growing a lot of fry in here and I wanted uh, to have as much um, well algae is very good for uh, keeping uh, infusoria in in like basically inside this moss is a lot of space and a lot of the fry can hide in there and like I said uh, with the infusoria and whatnot it makes it much simpler for the fry to uh, find what they need to eat and of course avoid being uh, predated on. Uh, so that's why that looks the way it does. And you can see the difference between these two. Uh, the one at the bottom is the top of that same moss ball I showed at the beginning and this is just another one from another aquarium so you can see the vast difference in the color here. And it is very easy to keep it like this. Uh, like I said, just prune it. Uh, do reasonable water changes because it does like uh, water that's relatively clean and clear. If you want it to look like this, of course. Like I said, it'll grow at anything. But uh, for it to grow and uh, look nice, uh, you do need that higher water quality. And I'm not talking about anything crazy. I mean, I don't do more than, uh, say, two water changes on this tank a month. I am trying to uh, breed some guppies in here, so I do like to keep it a little bit cleaner. Uh, but that's about it. Uh, and like I said, I don't use fertilizers. A couple of the tanks in this row, I do have pots of soil where I'm growing uh, Red Luigia, Valicinaria, that sort of thing. And that would increase the nutrient a little bit. Uh, but I'm not really seeing a great difference in the amount of growth from or um, poorer growth on the case as far as uh, java moss goes it just seems to do well regardless and like i said the only times i find that it doesn't do well is if it's being uh, overcrowded by something else or just overcrowding itself which is one of the things it does the most and that's about it it is a great beginner plant and one of the other attributes that i like to tout for this plant is it is really good at helping to 
regulate the chemistry in your aquarium. It is a fast grower and it does tend to suck up an awful lot in the way of nitrate and other things. So there you go. Uh, if you're starting out and you haven't kept live plants yet, uh, definitely give this one a shot. It is uh, well worth it and as you can see it is also a lovely plant. So leave comments below. Let me know what you think about, uh, well, Java moss. I'm sure most of you have kept it at one time or another. And also your experiences with other plants. So what you think is a really good tough plant and uh, ones that you would recommend for people to try when they're you know starting out because this is obviously, like I said, a beginner plant. Uh, even though I've been doing this forever and I still keep it because, like I said, it does have some really good uh, attributes that are well worth uh, keeping it around. So, again, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think below and I'll see you in the next video and bye for now.